When I first became a teacher, the standard way of organizing a math classroom was to stand at the front of the room and do a lot of examples. And the result of that kind of teaching was that students could do those exact problems and actually perform okay on certain assessments but not do so well when they got to college and had to use more critical thinking or analysis. We're going to do a lesson today. It's called Multiplicative Comparisons. I want you to think, what does that mean? Increasing students' critical thinking is a major objective of math tasks, the task-based approach to math instruction. So what kind of information do you think you need to have to figure this out? Kyle wants your advice on which person he should hire. Prepare a presentation using mathematical reasoning to help Kyle decide which employee will be the most cost-effective per day. A couple people have come up to me and said, well, we don't know how many students are in each class. But we know how many students are in our class, so couldn't we take that information and make a close guesstimate? Division and multiplication and everything like that isn't so hard. It's just figuring out which one you're supposed to do with which numbers and everything like that. Teachers design math tasks to engage students in cognitive struggle, the challenging trial and error process of applying mathematical reasoning to a problem with several possible entry points and solution pathways. Cognitive struggling is really important inside of mathematics. When children learn by memorization or by rote, it's something that they can recall, but they do not have any webbing or any schema behind it to be able to pull it back out. And the reason why is because when children learn for themselves, it becomes something that's embedded in them forever. How many feet is he, Stephen? Six what? Feet. Can you write that for us? Grab a marker, write six feet. Good job. To support students in the transition to task-based instruction, teachers can begin by creating a classroom culture in which students feel motivated to attempt the problems and safe to struggle with them. So I just put 28 because that should be the best fitting, and then I just got stuck the classroom that we'd like to see is the students doing the work, the students doing mathematics, and the teacher guiding them through. And that's kind of hard for teachers because we think we know the best way to get at the right answer and, and we want to share the best ways with our students. So forcing ourselves to step back, let the students grapple with things, and then guide them gently to the best way to do mathematics actually helps them to understand the subject more deeply. We're going to go from there, figure out how many, what, how, how long it took. What I want them to leave with, or when, when they're done with this lesson, is I want them to be able to understand how to solve a problem, or to be better at solving problems. Because when we leave, when we leave school, we're not given a sheet of of assignments and you know solve these multiplication problems. It's a here's this situation. How are you going to solve it? What are you going to do? And so that they can use whatever tools that they need to solve that on their own. The outcome of the task is not a product. The outcome of the task is a thinking ability, an ability to be able to problem solve. I'm pretty sure she has to have at least two a week. Because two of the clients always cover three dollars extra. So yeah, it would be two clients a week. Yeah, two clients a week. I have seen a huge change in their perseverance and their problem solving. It used to be they wanted to be finished with an assignment in five or ten minutes. They would want to know what time it had to be finished. So what's that going to be? Oh, it's up in That would be very important. And now um, when they come to my class, they don't expect to necessarily even get to the end in one class period, and, and they do know that. So. They're, they're more careful about their thinking, they're not feeling the time crunch, and they're more careful as far as having to um, explain to the other students why they did it or why they didn't do it. They don't need the 50 problems to learn how to do it. They need five. Just as students benefit from the cognitive struggle of performing math tasks, 
teachers strengthen their practice through the struggle of creating math tasks and patiently guiding students towards a solution. Good job. One of the big problems that we have in, in mathematics teaching is that teachers have experienced mathematics in the, the direct instruction model their entire lives. They had it in elementary school, high school, college. Um, they've experienced it in everything. Each summer, the Utah State Office of Education holds a week-long workshop for educators called the Utah Core Academy. At the most recent academy, the theme for math educators was developing a task-based approach. During your time at the academy, you're going to be asked to do math tasks that are hard and that require you to experience mathematics in a, in a much different way than you've, than you've experienced it in the past and in the same way that we'll be asking students to experience it as well. So I am excited now. I like my book. For me, I got I liked having practice developing a task. I really liked seeing different ones and practicing it and participating in the task activities first. And for me, it was fundamental to realize that the textbook that we currently have can be adapted fairly easily. There are a lot of tasks in there that are built for understanding and also that are based on real life situations. So to me, it seemed like I could take things in our textbook and tweak them and think through the guiding questions that I'd like to ask, and it might not be so difficult, really, to change my teaching to fit Common Core. You're opening your next movie theater on your own, and you're gonna choose the prices. I would definitely encourage teachers to, to try this. Um, this is really my first year of, of devoting an entire course to, to working in tasks. And it's challenging. It does take a lot more time to prepare a lesson, and. Make sure you know exactly what you're looking for um, before each class begins. It, it's definitely worth it. I mean, the students the students are doing better mathematics in general, and um, and it's more fun for me as a teacher as well. And get as many snowballs as you need for your group. Okay, so one, two, three. Ah! If we're able to carry out this transformation of mathematics teaching and learning, what we'll see within five years is students feeling more comfortable with mathematics, teachers feeling more comfortable with mathematics, understanding mathematics, mastering mathematical concepts at each grade level, progressing through the grade levels, and, and having previous understandings that build on later understandings. We'll see all of that. I think we owe a big round of applause to these nice folks. Thank you.